Is your head swirling with questions all coming back to school shootings? Yes, school shootings haven't been in the news as much as of late in the last couple of weeks, but the reality is they're on the rise. And so you have probably been asking yourself questions like, how do I talk to my child about this without increasing their anxiety and making them afraid to go to school and causing them to feel unsafe all the time? Or, you know, what does mental health have to do with all of this? Is mental health linked to violence? What's the response that we should have to that? What's appropriate? Um, what should the schools be doing? And why is it that our kids have to endure such horrible realities today in our society? So if you have been asking yourself these questions, you're going to greatly appreciate this video. And I actually created this video based on the many questions I received from parents. And so I know that these are questions that are on your heart and on your mind. And so I wanted to address them. And I actually did a live Facebook video on this. And so I am going to be including that, cutting that in here for you all to see and experience. Because um, it was a, a great training, to be honest. And so I just wanted to share that with you. Now, the last video I posted was a topic on how to talk to kids after school shootings actually happen. Whether it's one in your own neighborhood or one somewhere else. This video is a little bit different. This is more about the in-between these tragic times. You know, how do we encourage kids to know how to report things? How do we get them to be courageous? How do we talk to them without triggering them or making them feel like school is unsafe, which means that they're not going to be able to learn? How can we think about these things well and be able to know what really is expected of our schools? What's expected of us? What's expected of other people, especially people who have a mental illness? So I hope you enjoy this video. Please feel free to comment below with your questions. And of course, subscribe to the channel to stay updated. The next series I'm going to be doing is on how to respond to real life tantrums and struggles. I have real live footage parents have sent me, gonna be doing some commentaries on that, so be sure to subscribe. And please be sure to share this along so that we can prepare as many people to equip their children and to equip themselves as we get through this as a society. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into um, you know, talking about how is it that we need to talk to children about this, not after the fact, but as somewhat of a continuing conversation. Because when it comes to school shootings, let's face it, kids have these drills now as a part of their normal school routine, just like fire drills and tornado drills. These are now part of their routine. And so it's something that's going to come up on a regular basis, whether or not there are actual current threats or incidences that have occurred. So how can you talk to kids about this? And I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And so what comes to my mind is exactly what I tell kids when we're talking about confidentiality, which is a hard concept for them to grasp. But I always let kids know there are a few things that if you tell me about these things, I have to tell somebody else about it. And so these are something that you can kind of deem as, these are things that we never keep secrets about, that we always share with one another. As much as you'd like your child to open up to you about things, it's just not gonna happen all the time. So there are some things that you can do to let them know that these are the topics where we just never keep secrets. So that is, if someone is hurting you, 
if someone is going to hurt or is hurting someone else, and if you think that you are going to hurt yourself or you are going to hurt somebody else. So these are the things that, you know, in a counseling session, for example, I would tell kids, I have to tell somebody about this. So these are just the never keep any secret about these things um, kind of a rule that you can put in your home. So this is a really simple conversation that you can have for them. You lay it out for them. So, you know, I just want to make sure that you know that these are the things that we never keep secrets about because safety is always important. So if someone is hurting you, if someone is hurting someone else or going to hurt somebody else, and if you are going to hurt yourself or somebody else, those are the things that they need to tell you or they need to tell an adult about. So this is a really easy way that you can have that conversation with them in the middle of these horrible, horrifying situations. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to talk to them after the fact, especially if it happened in their school. But this is a continuing conversation that we really need to have with kids so that they know that they need to be brave and they need to share when these things are going on because people's lives, people's safety is at risk. And so if you have this conversation with them on a regular basis, it can be your no secrets check-in, right? No secrets check-in. You can do this every single week with your child. And you may think, oh, well, they, they're just going to, you know, like cover stuff up because they feel uncomfortable. No, they're not going to do that. And if they are, you're going to get a very clear picture of whether or not they are giving you the whole truth. Because this is something that you're doing on a regular basis. So is anyone hurting you? Is anyone hurting someone else or going to hurt somebody else? And are you feeling like hurting yourself or hurting someone else? The no secret rule. So do that check in with your kids on a regular basis. This covers way more than just, you know, the potential of someone doing a school shooting, right? And, um, you know, it just helps to protect your kids in so many ways as well. Now, when it comes to maybe continuing that conversation, maybe they're like, yeah, you know, nobody's, no one's going to hurt anybody. I know, and I haven't heard anything. Um, no one's hurting me. Everything's fine. Um, when it comes to maybe some tragedies that have come up, and I'll do a, a short little snippet of some of the things I talked about in my other video, but never assume that your child does know or does not know something. This is where we adults get ourselves in a mess and in a bind, is that we assume that kids know certain things or that they don't know certain things. And so then we ask questions or give them information based on the things we think they know or don't know. And then we end up telling them more than we think we should or, uh, you know, they are like, oh my gosh, like I heard this a million times. I don't need to, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And you have them shut down immediately. So I always encourage parents whenever there is a, an awkward or a tough conversation that you're going to have with your child, lead with questions. Don't lead with a lecture. If you lead with the lecture, you're almost guaranteeing that they're going to tune you out, shut down and not want to talk. So, you know, come up with some questions to help stimulate conversation. Ask what they know. Ask what they've heard. Ask what they think about it. This gives you an insight to the level at which they're really processing through this and wrestling with this. It lets you know whether or not they've been giving, given false information. And it lets you know also the level that they're able to talk about this. So, you know, maybe you're concerned about, you know, how specific and detailed do I get about things? Well, if they're talking in super specific detail, then it's appropriate to respond to them about the super specific detail. If, if they're not willing to talk about it, then that's okay. Um, give them the space that they need. You don't need to give them the full rundown. I promise you, schools are talking about this too, uh, and you will have opportunities in the future. You know, really determine what is the most important thing for them to know in this moment. Is it, you know, all the details? Probably not. What's the thing that you want them to know? How can they feel safe? What are things that you can allow them 
to hear that help them to feel safe. And not lies, because kids know. If you say, everything's going to be fine, or nothing bad is going to happen to you, um, that's a lie. It's a lie. We don't know if something bad is going to happen to kids. Now, that doesn't mean tell your first grader, well, you know, maybe someone will bust into your school tomorrow and shoot everybody up, right? That's not appropriate. Of course not. But what we can talk about is the things that are put in place to help keep them safe. So what do they know that they're supposed to do when something scary happens? They can't control anybody else, but they can control themselves. And so in controlling themselves, that means they can share if they hear something. And if something scary happens, they can do what they're supposed to do, which also means that when they're in control of themselves, they can listen and pay attention to when they're doing drills and when the teacher is telling them what to do. So they need to listen, they need to share, and they need to follow instructions and trust that the adults are going to do what they are supposed to do. Um, we can't let them know that nothing bad is ever going to happen because bad things happen every single day to everybody. And there are levels of bad, you know, there's super traumatic, mildly traumatic, and things where, you know, they think their life is going to end because somebody laughed at them, right? So there's a whole spectrum of, of bad things happening, but we don't want to give them a false sense of hope or security. We want to let them know where their safety lies and that it depends on them doing what they are asked to do in terms of not keeping secrets and following the instructions that adults give them. So I hope that that is helpful for you guys in looking at how to talk to your kids about these situations. And like I said before, I did a whole video on the post shooting or post threat type um, conversation that you can have. So I'll put the link in there after I'm done with this one. Now, um, some people are asking about anxiety with their kids. So when it comes to anxiety, you know, how can you tell if your child is overly anxious about this? So here are just a few ways that a child may be showing anxiety. Um, so they may be complaining of stomach issues, um, whether that's going to the bathroom a lot, whether that's a gurgly stomach, whether that's constipation, whether, you know, that's feeling nauseous. There are all sorts of things with the gut that is tied to anxiety. So if that's a common one, um, you know, if that's something you're seeing, then maybe they're experiencing more anxiety and you guys need to maybe have more of these conversations. Um, if they will not have eye contact with you or they're constantly fidgeting, so they could be, you know, rubbing their hands or, um, you know, kicking their feet a lot or touching their face. Um, these are some signs of anxiety. Stuttering, a lot of stuttering. If they can't get their words out, this can be another one. And then just avoidance, you know, avoiding, wanting to avoid school, wanting to avoid other people. Um, these are all things to start looking out for to see if your child may be exhibiting some anxiety. Um, biting of nails or objects, that's another one. And even just acting out can be a way for them to show anxiety. Um, and finally, exerting control. If they are being super controlling, if they are being super you know, defiant or resistant all of a sudden, this actually could be anxiety. Anxiety is feeling like you don't have any control. So a lot of times kids will try to get control wherever they can to deal with that fact um, that they don't have control in so many other places. So. Now, there's a couple of things that I did want to discuss for sure that also have to do with everything that's going on. So I know that in my town specifically, there was some really frustrating um, situations when it came to communicating in the school, and there were a lot of parents upset about why did the school do a better job? Why didn't we hear about this sooner? 
what's going on with the kid, we need to know what's happening. And so, because I used to work for a therapeutic day school, um, and am familiar with some of the administrative things that need to go on when it comes to schools and behavior issues and crises, um, I really wanted to speak to this. So when it comes to other students' information, there is just not anything you are going to find out. Schools cannot share other people's personal information. So for example, if some kid socks your kid in the nose, the school cannot tell you what kid socked your kid in the nose. Now, your kid is probably gonna tell you who socked him in the nose, but the school is not allowed to do that. So they are not allowed to disclose personal information about other kids. They cannot disclose what type of discipline that they are getting. This is none of your business to be honest. And I know that your child has been impacted negatively by another child and you want justice <clears throat> to be served. And that is completely understandable, but you wouldn't want your business being, you know, given out all over to people. And so, you know, just, just understand that, you know, it's not any of your personal business for things to be spread around. Um, you finding out that information is not going to do anything helpful for you. It's not going to do anything helpful for the child or the school. It cannot be shared. Now, there was also some questioning around, like, why did the kid go in an ambulance? Like, what's going on with that? So, if a child is taken away in an ambulance, and it has to do with violence, you can rest assured that that child is likely being taken to the hospital, whether that's a normal hospital or a psych hospital either way they're going to get a psych evaluation and you can trust the professionals to do the job that they are supposed to do so if that is what is going on that is that is what's going on they're being taken to you know so if the ambulance is there um they're being taken to be psychiatrically psychologically evaluated um now, whether this student is expelled or not, again, um, that's not really something that you parents get to decide on. And um, if the school decides to allow that student to stay because of whatever circumstances, then that's their decision. Now, of course, everybody's going to panic about that and, and worry, but here's what I need everybody to really acknowledge and in practice. So you're not going to agree with everything the school says. You're not going to like the dumb things that kids do, right? You're not going to like it. But you complaining about how the school is not doing a good enough job and you complaining about what a horrible person that child is, is only adding to your child's anxiety. If you are talking about how the school is ridiculous and how the school should have done this and how you can't believe the school is doing this or is not doing this, what you are telling your child is that you do not have faith in the people at their school to keep them safe. And so if you are wanting to minimize your child's anxiety, you cannot bash the school. You cannot bash the school. It's going to make them feel more anxious. I'm not saying you have to like what the school decides. I'm not saying that you have to agree with everything or never tell anybody how you feel about the school. But you cannot let your kids know this because they will not feel safe. And it will impact their ability to thrive in school. So please, please, please do not complain about the school in front of them. Also, uh, please do not talk about what a horrible person this child is, what a horrible person this child's family is. All this is going to do is if the child comes back to the school, it's going to ostracize them even more. We need to focus on, we need to be more loving to people who are hurting. Not that we need to look down on other people who are struggling. And if we're honest with ourselves, any person can get to that place. 
It's not this magical, you know, like, oh, I think I'm going to wake up and go and do something horrible today. No. And it's not just people with a mental health diagnosis who are capable of this. Anybody and everybody is capable of getting to the point where they do something horrendous. No person is better than another. And so we cannot focus on, oh, how horrible, or, oh, that child's family must be blah, blah, blah. We need to talk about how can we be more loving? Who's someone at your school that you are going to pay more attention to this time? Because maybe they're hurting and frustrated and they want to hurt other people, right? If we put fear and shame and all of that on other people, we're not going to solve the problem. So start talking to your kids about loving other people. Stop bashing the kids that make mistakes. Stop bashing the kids who don't have a chance because their family doesn't know anybody because or any better because their family didn't know any better. And there's no need to bash other people. We can focus instead on how are we going to be loving? How are we going to make change in the school so that these things don't happen anymore without being negative? So I definitely wanted to talk about that. I think that's really crucial in all of this that we're not bashing the school and we are not bashing the kid or the family because that's going to do nothing to help your child to feel more safe and it's certainly going to do nothing to solve the problem at hand. So I hope that that resonates with you um, and any comments and things you you know have in response to that I would love 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 to hear. Um, now here's another thing that other people may not really feel great about me sharing but <laughs> I've seen a lot of posts about how people are saying my child should not have to be dealing with this or my child is too young to be facing things like this um, you know oh my goodness I can't believe that I'm having this conversation with my child and I agree with you it's heartbreaking and we don't want our kids to have to go through these things and we don't want them to experience violence or for violence to be a threat but if we are honest the majority of the children on this planet are in that type of danger every single day and very real danger the majority of the kids on this planet truly think that they could get shot today truly think that somebody could really seriously harm them, that someone could abduct them and put them into slavery, that a bomb is going to come and blow up their home. The majority of children out there have to face those realities. And I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying that, you know, we just need to settle down and suck it up and deal with it. That's not it at all. But these are real things that the majority of the world's children are dealing with on a daily basis. And being in America doesn't mean that we are special or privileged and shouldn't have to deal with what everybody else in the world is dealing with. And so just know that, yes, it's a tragedy that kids have to experience these things. But most kids are. It's a sad reality, but it is reality. And so just know that, um, you know, it's not just your poor little babies. It's, it's the world that is having this problem as well. Um, and lastly, I just want to talk about mental illness because this is a really big topic every time this comes up um, that everyone blames mental illness, mental illness. Um, so first I want to say, one out of six Americans are taking medication for mental health related issues. Okay, so if mental illness therefore means violence, we would be living in one scary place where people are constantly being violent. Okay, so mental health does not mean violence is sure to come or mental illness does not mean violence is sure to come 
there were some diagnoses thrown out there about this past um, shooter's mental health diagnosis. Let me tell you, many mental health diagnoses are incorrect or outdated. So it could be he got a diagnosis a while ago and it hasn't been updated. Um, certain diagnoses do have a higher frequency of violence being related. That is true. However, those are things like conduct disorder or someone who is a sociopath, people who are psychotic and not in their right mind, right? So yes, those people are maybe more prone to violence, but it doesn't mean that they're absolutely going to do it. And it doesn't mean that anybody with a mental illness or mental health diagnosis is certainly down the path of violence or way more prone to violence. It's just not true. Having a mental health diagnosis does not make you a violent person. There are mindsets and thoughts that are repeated by choice on a daily basis that get people to the point where they're able to do horrible things. And like I said earlier, okay, we are not immune to that. Every single person who watches this video is not immune to one day getting to the point where they would do something that horrible. And so it's not the mental illness, it's the thoughts over and over and over again. It's the fact that people are afraid of people with a mental health diagnosis or that they are being criticized or ostracized or looked down upon. This is why there are issues, okay? People are get feeling isolated. People are feeling like they can't get help. People look down on other people with a mental health diagnosis. That is the problem. We need to stop making it so difficult for people to muster up some courage to get some help. And we need to make sure that if we see a child struggling, um, or they're in a family that's just not healthy. Be that positive change. Be the person who can speak into that situation. Um, you know, contribute. See how you can help. Um, but just because someone has a mental health diagnosis does not mean they're going to end up hurting a bunch of people. Um, it's just not going to happen. It's just not true. It's just not true. And there are a lot of people who are getting help. There are a lot of people who are doing better for themselves. But let me say this, if your child has a diagnosis or your child is exhibiting behaviors that you are worried about and you wonder if your child's gonna grow out of it or if it could turn into something horrendous like these violent acts, that is just not a risk worth taking. That is something that is worth your investment to make sure that they go on the right path. And so I want to just encourage you, if you're a parent and you are wondering this and you are concerned, please get help and do not feel ashamed and do not feel like your child is doomed or your ch there's something wrong with them or anything like that. You just need a little support and that's okay. It's okay. So. I wanted to just clear the air about all of that. I know this was a longer video. I hope it was helpful. Let me know if you have any more questions that I can answer. Um, my hope is I will get this all edited and put it up on YouTube for you all as well. So thank you. You all have a great rest of your evening and do not hesitate to reach out if you or your child needs help. Thank you. Bye. There it is. I hope that you really appreciated that video and that you were able to start to think about these topics in a new way. If you had your emotions triggered at any point during that talk, please know that anything that I shared in that video is truly out of a heart of love. I am not here to make people feel guilty. I am not here to discourage you. Uh, I just want to be able to speak truth in love 
and be able to encourage as many parents out there as I can, as well as equip them to be able to equip their children and just allow them to grow their relationship together as we all move through this journey called life. So thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you soon.